Yo, 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 it's the kid, 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 man. We are back in here, um, doing a little thing, man. Um, football dugouts. And look, man, looks like if we are coming ever so closely to maybe football returning, because again, this is obviously going to be a Bundesliga focus, but I just got a, um, a, a, um, alert from Bleacher Reports that was talking about something related to um, um, the Premier League maybe re re returning at a point. So we'll obviously get into that. And do you know what it's for? It is funny. Basically, I always keep mm. how I know about fixtures is this app I have called Football Fixtures, which just which keeps things in. That thing has been done for a month. So <laughs> I just saw Football Fixtures. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I have missed you. Because <laughs> every single day I'll do Football Fixtures, okay, Bundesliga, La Liga, Serie A, also. So now... Basically, like it basically says, like, what's it? Um, finally, football is back. Premier League will return in June. Stay tuned, we will update the fixtures soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Don't it's mixed that. feeling with that baby. Yeah. because at one point, I'm like, is it too Wait. safe to return? On one point, is that oh my god, I have missed football, man. <laughs> so, how are you guys doing, man? But you know what, is it isn't hasn't Brighton had another player test positive? <gasps> I know people are saying maybe it's because they're in relegation. They're just saying, oh, you know what? Man's got corona in it. But if that is true and they have got put, then how can you bring it back? The, the I thing is, and I, I was staying on uh, with when I was talking to Yannicka mm. last week, the Man City fan, and I was saying, the reality is, coronavirus now is here to stay. It's, it's here mm. for life. It's going to be, I'm not saying, I'm, I know people get all conspiracy when you start mentioning other stuff. It's going to be like the flu. Some players are going to get them. You know, Ozil's always out sick. And everyone's like, sick with what? Why is he sick? That's how it's going to be, maybe, you know, going forward. Every year, people are going to be, they've contracted coronavirus, COVID-19, and they're out for two weeks, or whatever it is. Now, obviously, they hope that the mortality rate goes down because there'll be more services that the NHS can deal with those kind of mm. patients if it gets more serious. But that's the reality of life. So, I'm not saying, I'm not even saying, yes, it's, we're ready to return now. But whenever we do return, you're still going to get case of people uh, being off because of coronavirus. Do we postpone mm. football every, you know, every month, every, for two months, every time someone gets it? No, you can't do that. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say Brian, or, you know, fibbing, but it's convenient that considering their fixture list, as you mentioned, mm. fixtures, and their precarious relegation position, that they're the one to announce um, uh, four, three or four players uh, contracted coronavirus. Because a, a similar thing actually happened in Germany in uh, the second division or the championship equivalent. Uh, mm. Dynamo Dresden, who were bottom of the league, mm. I think they had four or five players that they said tested positive. <laughs> so maybe it's, a, <laughs> maybe it's going to be a recurring theme. All the teams in relegation will be like, you know what? <laughs> well, we're in trouble, you know. We got, we got no play. No, 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 no. Someone even mentioned that. That's just going to be like a new excuse that they will use. Hey, look, man, this corona thing, man. Look, man, it is what it is. So, guys may ab abuse that. But before we, we, we go into the whole thing, um, I want to congr congratulate Knicks because it seems, it seems like if you've now moved into a new mansion, I'm looking at what your new crib looks like. I mean, I can see a fireplace there. I can think I can see like a mink rung in the background. Yeah. So, look, man, you know, when you've clearly make it don't forget us little guys like this and just said can i can i please come to your crib to your, saved, to, your, to your mansion because that mansion looks real nice behind you that's what i want well, to say i've saved a lot of money during this period you know no travel and that kind of stuff um, so i've been able to purchase uh this mansion if you put me on solo you can see my little piano at the back as well <laughs> uh, fortunately for you um the house is big enough that we can you know, oh my oh, god give me yeah. a difference. Uh, what a crib so yeah, yeah, you know, I've got rooms for for everyone. You know, as long can you as can you play, play that piano? Yeah, yeah. Can you actually play the play, play, the, play the piano? Oh, I can play it, but you know, obviously, we, time is of the essence, so we should get this show um, up and running. Okay, okay. Wow, that that, that that is amazing. So, um, yeah, no, 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 no. Look, look. Oh wow, see, see, guys are like saying, "Oh, oh damn. <laughs> Whoa, oh my God, wow, jeez, man, look, man, <laughs> this guy, he's, oh, wow." Okay, so guys, look, man, um. Here it is, man. We are officially in the COVID-19 football era and all eyes are on Friday where I believe Dortmund face Schalke and BT Sports better update their bloody app 
or else I'm not I'm or else I'm not giving you my twenty five pounds a month for that <laughs> bloody thing. So 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 so, so just tell me without you want you want you want my money or not. So all eyes are on Dortmund Schalke and um, how the first league in football is going to now because again, see now I thought I thought that the Bundesliga was the first major sport to to do this whole COVID nineteen thing. And then I, t- I look on Twitter and this dude, I think it's Francis Gano, smacks the living crap out of this dude in 27 seconds. So I'm mm. like, oh, so your boy Dana White is like, no, 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 no. I'm already on that thing right now. So and the funny thing about it was that as he smacks him down and everything, you saw one of the trainers and they actually have a mask. So I'm like, okay, so <laughs> what are the procedures here? So but, he can touch, he has a mask, he doesn't have a mask. So that was weird. So... What do you? <laughs> this is not a sport. So, before we even go to the Bundesliga, what did you take with regards to the UFC coming back and the kind of procedures they had? You know, what? Dana White's a madman because didn't he want to put them on an island and let Mortal them Kombat. On, Mortal on, Kombat on, a, on an island away from yeah? But I wasn't one of the fighters. Didn't one of the fighters have coronavirus? I think before it, one of the fighters. Uh, had, was tested positive for coronavirus before a couple of days before the fight. I'm not sure if he was pulled from his particular fight, which would make sense, or if if it was just a thing of uh, he was tested for it. They'd take a certain precautions. We're going to allow him to fight. I don't know, but if any sport is going to go ahead uh, in this pandemic, you'd think MMA would be the last one mm. because they're literally well, maybe not in the case of Francis and Gano because he's like, don't touch me. <laughs> bang them out um but if you're grappling with dudes sweating all over them breathing all over each other if there is any element or, or risk um that's the sport where you're gonna get it um but they oh, yeah, also I, on the other hand, I, don't, I don't know who jace is yeah J- jacare yeah oh, okay but in any case you'd think that that's one of the most tested sports in terms of they do drug tests they do medicals uh so you'd think that's probably one of the safest sports as well when you think of the other aspect of it um I mean, any professional sports are going to do medicals uh, constantly, but this one in particular is stringent. Um, so I just hope that there's no reports that come out afterwards saying that that one person passed it on to this person and he passed it on to that person. Now, all of a sudden, 15 of the people funny. in attendance. You know what I mean? What I found funny was that, well, actually, was it behind closed doors? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there was no so, so there were like very few, few people, yeah. No oh, yeah what I found um, funny was that the referee, I saw a picture of one of the referees were wearing a mask. And I was yeah. like, but the player, the, the fighters are all up in each other's <laughs> club. <laughs> it's either safe or it's not safe, isn't it? I don't understand. No, 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 no. That was why I was confused. So, so these two guys, you see, the guy that was um went to treat the dude that was on floor, okay, one dude had a mask, the other dude didn't have a mask. So I was like, this is just all con- con- confusing. So I was like, look, it, it was weird. Let's just go to so, so bonus mm-hmm. right now. So, so going through with Dortmund Schalke right now. Let me ask you this first. In your personal opinion, and I'll, I'll maybe kick things off, then I'll give it to you guys. In your op- opinion first, what do you think about behind closed doors and there not being any fans? Can football still work without having any fans? Because here's my thing about it is that, you see, I think that um, um, fans are critical to football and they're very important to football. And I, and I think that it's going to be feel very weird not having fans in football and looking at you know a last minute goal, 93rd minute goal, and everything because you see it was cool when you saw it with Juventus and Thingy because it's just that a one off game. If you now have a multitude of games and especially chunks of games with, with no fans, it's going to feel really weird. So I am sort of in a dilemma of at in one hand, I'm happy that this, this, this is back because I just want to just see for, for, for football, but on the other hand. I'm not sure that I'm ready to see a Champions League that doesn't have fans and fans reacting to specific things. But then again, I do listen, I, I do watch a lot of the matches without any sound. So, you know, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Devil. See, the thing is, football is for the people, first mm-hmm. and foremost. It's for the people. We have to remember it's a spectator sport. Um, without the fans there, it does lose something. Um, but obviously, safety comes comes first but i do feel like in a way if you're wanting to finish this season so badly 
it can't be for the people that actually enjoy watching it, the people that go to the stadium. Um, it's for, well, not just monetary reasons, obviously sporting reasons as well. But you have to remember what fo- where football came from. Football is about the people who follow the football clubs and go to the matches and support the clubs. So we are losing out in an in a, in a aspect. But at the same time, um, if they're going to find some sort of way to put all games on TV, which is something I haven't heard of, if all games are going to be available to watch on TV, mm-hmm. then you kind of squash that whole idea. Because if they're putting on games in, behind closed doors and no one can watch it, you know what I mean? Um, that's, that's a very um, good point. We have to, we have to remember that's a very well, good point. the whole thing about Juve and Champions League. Behind closed doors is a punishment. It's a punishment for clubs. It's not like, you know what, you just can't bring fans this week. You know what I mean? Off you go. It's a punishment. So what, what's actually happening now is all games are behind closed doors. You're punishing all the fans that can't go. I understand why understand why but as i said how do you compensate for that how are the fans going to be compensated no one said anything about that yet mm. it's just let's finish the season no one said anything about okay what about the fans of these clubs who's going to get to see the football oh, no, no 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 because it's interesting because i remember reading something where they said that there is going to be like a free-to-air option where people are going to be able to... Because, again, that, that's a great point because, see, the whole notion was, okay, the 3 p.m. games aren't shown on TV because people are now in the in the stadiums. So they want to promote people to the stadiums. If nobody can go to the stadiums, yo, let's all watch this, this stuff. I not, so are we now going to not be charged to watch all of these games? So there has to be a large portion of games where, obviously, you have BD Sport and Sky who have a, the big games. Mm. Bro, let's free to air. Yeah. Free to air. So I don't know how much money you will lose from doing that, but no, it's like. But then that brings its own problem. How how are you gonna how are you gonna broadcast ten games? Or let's say there's all games are at three o'clock. There's six games at three. How are you gonna broadcast all six games? Is that gonna go what on BBC? Is that gonna go? Are you gonna do it on YouTube? Uh, how are you gonna how are they gonna do it? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, like the Champions League. In, um, where you, you know, you know how, how you can pretty much choose each game you want. So you have like an yeah. app. So let's say like the BBC app, you go online and then there's like, you know, you, basically mm-hmm. Champions League nights during the group stages where you have eight games and you can just choose which which game to. Yeah, but that's on BT. Well, listen, you I have to pay I, for that. I, put like this, I think the Amazon streaming that we had in December around the Christmas period mm-hmm. is, is massive in the sense that we were able to watch, if you wanted, multiple games at the same time. And I think so. As long as these corporations, whoever's doing the streaming, as long as they are able to have, at least an app, whatever it is a, a service where you can flick from game to game, then I don't, see, I don't see it being an issue. Multiple games being played at the same time, because if you were, for example, to go to the game, if you were going to get, um, you, you know, Burnley fans going to the Burnley game and Southampton fans going to the Southampton game, if you're in the Southampton game at three o'clock, you're not going to be watching the Burnley game. If you're a Man United fan, yes, you want to know what's happening with Man City, but you're quicker to watch your own team before someone else. And you know, you, you still might you still get a super Sunday or a your early kickoff, a late kickoff, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I don't there's, 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 for me, there's gonna be no issue with multiple games being played at the same time because that already happens. And for us who aren't going to the games, we find a way, some of us, you know, find a way to watch those games that are happening at the same time. So I don't see that being an issue. I think football has to return. Um, it has to return, obviously, safe. That's the first... Um, that, that's the priority. It has, has to be safe. It has to be safe. But the behind closed doors, again, it takes away um, It takes away from the essence of top-level football and football in general, even at a lower level, oh, because okay. it's, always, it's all about the fans. It's about the fans going to um, the games, uh, supporting their team from you know, a local level to uh, a much more international level. Um, but going to the game, supporting their team and the, the fan, the players basically putting on a show, entertaining those who have um, who have come to see them. But football has to return because we don't know this coronavirus, you know, pandemic epidemic is. So much, so much <laughs> is, it, is, it, is this a pandemic ac- academic? No, epidemic. Oh, oh, yeah. No, no, I thought you were trying to rhyme or something. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so um, unknown. There's so many unknowns that you can't just have cancel football 
until we can get fans into the game because, you know, there's so much at stake. So the reality is I think behind closed doors is going to become, I'm not going to say the new norm because at some point we're going to get the fans back in the stadium. But say we finish the season behind closed doors, next season I can easily see it um, continuing or starting behind closed doors or reduced. So it might be every stadium, you can only fill up 20%, 30%, 40%. I don't know what, what they're going to do. Mm. We're not going to get immediately a return to full um, packed stadiums. Um, but I think it, it definitely does have, have to return. Um, I'll tell you what, they'll definitely so say quick, Very quickly, shout out uh, Football Terrace, Terry in the comments, mm. um, watching. Mm. I'm sure everyone's probably subscribed to him. If they haven't, go over there and, uh, yeah. and subscribe to him. He, um, yeah. he doesn't think has Big up, Terry. <laughs> You know what they definitely won't do just to go on that? Away fans. It'll be a long time before they allow away fans into stadium. Because if you imagine you've got a, a whole bunch of people travelling down from, say, uh, I would say Manchester, but they're all here in London. Um, <laughs> say everyone travelling down from Newcastle to come watch a game and you've got 5,000 people. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I, I can't see them allowing away fans to do that. So it might be a while before we see away fans in stadiums. Mm. All right, so let's... Now zero in on the Bundesliga game right now. So again, you know, um, we um, have a case of where you know um, I believe Baninik are now um, top of the table. Let's let's even sort of bring up this table right now. So my question for you guys is this: is that, and I think this is the question that everyone is going to ask, and this is one that I even have been thinking about specifically with regards to the Champions League. Is like you now have a case of where, okay. We've not people have not really played any competitive football for about six weeks. Then guys say, Well, everybody has their own solo routine, so everybody has been training. Two things to that is that has everybody been doing this training? Mm. Um, as, 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 as much as, as you think, yeah, that's the first thing. The second thing is this training is one thing, playing competitive football is another thing. Forget about preseason games or so forth in training. A big part of everything of getting match fits are those five on five games played at full tilt during five on five. Nobody has come close to anything like that of that intensity for the last six weeks. So, my thing is, what will be very interesting is in this Dortmund Schalke game and in the Bundesliga games, is where is everyone's fitness at? Because there's something very interesting. I want to talk to you guys with regards to PSG and Ligo and the, and the Champions League. But specifically for um, in the Bundesliga in right now, do you think it's a case of if we see it, it's the first few weeks, the football is going to be very crap, miscontrolled, guys will be pulling muscles because they have said that FIFA have put the green light, it says five subs can be used for the rest of the season mm -hmm. just yeah. to keep people fresh. So, so, so I'm com I'll come on to Nick. So do you think the fitness levels are, are going to be very dodgy, so it will feel like August in the first few games, or do you think that people will be because they did do a few training? They have they actually been training, but again, I, don't, I from my knowledge, I don't think any five on fives mm. or any matches have been done. So well, I don't think any, unless they were doing behind closed doors matches, nothing that you will do in training is going to replicate what you will get on the pitch, and even then, a behind closed doors little a match where there's nothing at stake the you don't have the same intensity the same adrenaline the same you know those kind of things that you need in a, a 90 minute match i think it's gonna be a, a bit of a build up to get to that stage um but the, the reality is i mean it's, it's nothing's at, once the season got postponed everything nothing was the same you know to quote drake um, <laughs> oh, everything was thrown up on, everything was thrown up in the air in it so I think it's it's a you know it's an evil that we're gonna have to accept. Players are gonna be a bit unfit, but the, the more the more professional ones will be able to have a higher level of fitness or a lower level of unfitness go into those games. I guess you're gonna see um, the who are the real professional. You know, we're gonna separate the Cristiano Ronaldo from the Eden Hazard, the professional from the. Whoa, 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 no. <laughs> mm. Mm. Everyone's 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 everyone's
you can't be like, oh, my players aren't good enough. That's just a reality. Some players are better than others. Some mm. players are fit. You know, Kante's fitter than most people when everyone's fit. You can't, you can't use that as an excuse. Oh, he can run longer. No, it's just a reality of the game. So, you know, it is what it is, isn't it? Football, getting football back safe is, is more important. You know, um, you know what? I think um, it will have a bit of a preseason vibe to it. The first couple games, I think, will be a bit slower than what you might be used to at this time, this point in the season, because this is where the intensity really gets, you know, pushed up towards the business end of the season. So it's going to be weird. It's going to be weird. Uh, people coming back having not played for six weeks, as as Nick said, you can't really replicate that intensity in training, especially since they've only been in training for what ten days, two weeks. Mm. Uh, whereas in a preseason, you get six weeks, seven weeks. Do you know what I mean? To get yourself ready for the go back. So it, it is going to be strange. Um, I think we might have some exciting matches for a completely different reason to what we're used to. Uh, I think there might be a lot of... I mean, there's a lot of goals in Bundesliga anyway. Um, but I imagine there could be a lot of goals going in where uh, players aren't being tracked. Especially legs are tired. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Things are like leg, legs are getting tired. Minds are tired. You know, so I think we're going to start... And I think, to be honest, to start with this game, because uh, this is one of the biggest rivalries of German football, uh, Dortmund versus Schalke. Um, it should be a very intense, a very fiery affair. Um, it would be quite disappointing to see if it is just a bit damp. Do you know what I mean? If they just come out and they, after 15 minutes they're all jogging. Do you know what I mean? And hamstrings are popping and things like that. It will be, it'll be um, a massive disappointment. So we'll just have to wait and see. All right, so let's go a bit more intense into where the Bundesliga is at if we keep our fingers crossed that this thing is all going to go through. So you have Bayern Munich. So this is 25 games played. So again, I'm not great, I'm not great at math. Um, is that 13 games left? No, the, is it, no, no it, they it, only play... Um, there's like, 18 teams. Oh, 18. So, oh, so, so they play 34? Nine, nine games left. Nine oh, games left. Yeah, yeah. So basically, so, um, so, from, so 55 points, Bayern Munich... 51 Dortmund, 50 Leipzig, 49 Mönchengladbach, Leverkusen, 47. Mm. So, you see, here's my thing. You see, before this thing stopped, I was, I said, Bionic, boom, Hansi Flick, they're on a roll. They're, they're looking really good. Chelsea could have done something like the Alliance. Relax. Laugh at me all you want. Alliance could have. I th- just just give me give me my second leg and then I can move on. Unless you give me my second leg, I will still hold on to, to some sort of hope. <laughs> so, but before this whole pandemic thing, I think Bayern, I felt they were on a roll. I think Dortmund, Leip- I think Leipzig was, has sort of softened it a bit. And I just think that, you know, Mönchengladbach and Dortmund did not really have it. So, but I think this changes things. Yes, Lewandowski is back, which is huge because he's had one of the best seasons in the world of, of, of anybody. But I do think that there, there, there may be a glimmer of hope for Dortmund and Leipzig because this, so there's now a new question. Hence, why well, this is now new in this whole COVID-19 thing. Which team has been affected the most during mm-hmm. this lockdown? So maybe Bernini come back and they're not in great physical shape. You know how, how, how good they are, but people sort of, take for granted because we never really had it. People take for granted how important fitness and being in, in peak physical shape is because that comes before even tactics or your ability. If you're not in good physical shape, you can't even do the things that, they, that you want to do. So the younger teams, the younger squads may be in a better position early on the, like, the first two or three games, first two or three weeks or whatever. Um, and that could bring, and I'm not saying they're out of it at the moment, but that could bring Dortmund right back, you know, mm-hmm. Right, um, level maybe at the top of the table because they got See, a lot of young players. The interesting thing is, as well, is that I think Dortmund played Bayern Munich in, in two or three games. Um, I think Much and Glasbach also have to play Bayern Munich soon as well. Um, so a lot could change over like the first three weeks. They're still very tight. I know the point's different when you look at it like that. It looks like Bayern Munich are, are firmly in control, which they were before the break, they were on a run which was mm. ridiculous. They were literally sweeper teams. Uh, <laughs> Dortmund had started to, you know, they were scoring five a week. Haaland's got nine in five games or something stupid like that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So will these players hit, like Lewandowski, Haaland, will they continue where they left off, Sancho? Or will it take them a while? That could be the difference. So if, let's say, we, we look past Bayern Munich, mm. 
who would you let's say put your money on on sort of recovering best from them and maybe giving Barney Nick um a good role for them for the money? Because you see, here's my thing, because I think momentum is obviously a very key thing. Because Leipzig were doing really well. I think at the point Leipzig were actually top of the table a while. Then they hit a roadblock and then they went through. Because my thing is that I have my eye on Leipzig because maybe Leipzig needed that break mm. to sort of reassess themselves, reclaim themselves. Mm. And I think, again, a point that I think, I think it's Nick that said it, who are the younger team? I think Leipzig have some young dudes that Bayern Munich are not that much of a young team. Yeah. Like, if you look at their key guys, Lewandowski, Thomas Muller, and all those kinds of stuff, these guys are, are sort of quite, quite old. But I think Leipzig are quite a young team. So maybe this break, because look, they're only five points behind Bayern Munich, only, and one point behind Dortmund. So do you think maybe this Leipzig could actually benefit the most, seeing that they were really good to start off with? And maybe this break has helped to refresh them and re-energize them and refocus them? Put Putting quality aside, I think the teams that were on a bad run of form, you know, will benefit more from the break than the teams who are on a good run of form. Because you, you, don't, you don't want to break up the momentum. And it can even be a psychological thing in the sense that you feel hard done by because you're like, oh, we were going so good. We don't know what's going to happen. Like you're, you're a bit tentative. Are we going to be, you know, back to where we left, um, pick up where we left off? Whereas the teams who, as you said, were on a bad run of form, they're just like, thank God, we needed that break. Let's, all right, guys, regroup, let's go again. We've got, some, you know, we've been given a second chance. Um, so just psychologically, that could have a benefit on, on someone like um, Leipzig. Dortmund is a, a tricky one because they were on a good run of form and they're also behind on the table. So it's like, I think they, they might be hoping, all right, hopefully this break, oh, oh, you know, this is all, all in the context of football, but hopefully this break has disrupted Dortmund, um, uh, Bayern Munich, more than it's disrupted us. Because I think they're both in a similar position in terms of the games they were winning and, um, and, and the amount of goals they were scoring. But that gap needs to be caught up. So they're just hoping that Bayern um, will struggle to regain that momentum much um, or m m harder than it would take for someone like Dortmund. Um, but as much as Bayern are an older team, an older squad, with that comes experience. Now, obviously, of course, they've never experienced something like this before. Mm. But so this is new. This is new. It is. Mm. But you have if, you have, if you've got certain old heads around and you can, you know, you focus the minds. Guys, we know we've, yeah, we've won X amount of Bundesliga and all that, but we need to, it might be saying, you know, we need to give the people of Munich X, Y, Z. We need to give, you know, we need to um, make sure that we don't falter because it's so easy to, you have that kind of, whereas if you're a younger team or younger squad, you're a bit more carefree. You're a bit more, you know, let's just go out, have fun, see what happens. So it's really, I don't know, it's, it's so hard to call at this stage. I think the first couple of fixtures will really see where teams are at physically and mentally. You know, I mean, so yeah. before I come to the I think, see, that's the key thing is like, I get that Bayern Munich have this amazing experience, which, which will, will be key, and they know how to react through hardships. This is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever been through something like this before, which is what makes it so much more interesting. This isn't the case of, like, oh, you've gone through five losses or you've had three injuries because these are things that you, that you go through. This is a different psychological mental challenge because for six weeks, you've lived in self-isolation and watched as the world of sports has just sort of crumbled. So remember, at a point, many when this started, a lot of guys were like, oh, yeah, I think this the season is finished. So people were already reserved from the mind of, like, when this hits in March, we're like, yeah, man, football is never going to come back. So to now, it's my comeback. It's probably going to come back. It's really gonna, well, now it's back. So the – and also as well is, is anybody still fearful? Is anybody still sort of trepidation through the fact of, like, um, do I really want to – because because and they made the point of like contacts or contacts in, at, at at UFC is are the ones where you you can really you exchange fluids. But football, you sweat, you tackle, you're you're pulling people's shirts. You're during a a corner. It's a flipping wash pit during like a corner and, and everything. So is that another psychological mm. um, barrier that people have to go through? Of like, do people still have the back of mind? Mm. How safe is this and everything? So, Devon. I mean, they're human. 
they are human, so they are going to be scared. I think some players, and then I think this comes down to the managers. I think the managers are going to have to look at the players. There's going to be certain players who are going to be fine and say, you know what, whatever, I'll just play the sport. There might be others who are going to be a bit apprehensive and a bit, you know, they don't really, they don't really feel safe. Uh, and it's up to the managers then to choose a team, not necessarily because they're the best players, mm. but it might be necessary to pick the players who are more focused and who are more willing to play and give 100%. Uh, that's another uh, aspect of the game where managers are going to have to really uh, earn their money. Um, in terms of who would have more of an advantage, I think, as, as Hope was saying, this is unprecedented. You can't really say if anyone's going to have an advantage because no one's been in this situation to mm. take advantage of it previously. Um, so it's completely... Nobody knows what's going to happen. Um, another thing as well, teams that were possibly missing key players before due to injury um, who may now have players back, that could be an advantage mm. towards the end of the season. Because before, I don't know if Marco Reus is, is fit now, but I'm just going to use him as an example. Where Royce was injured before, if he's now all of a sudden fit, that's a massive boost to Dortmund. Massive. Yeah. When they thought they weren't going to have him for the rest of the season, and now all of a sudden, oh, actually, we might get him for four or five games. That could be a massive turning point. Um, and then you've got the other part of the thing as well, where it's not just um, title chasing teams. You've got the Champions League, uh, and it's very tight in that Champions League spots as well. So you've got those lot thinking, you know what, we were on bad form before. It looked like we weren't going to qualify for Champions League. Now we've been given this chance. If we can hit the road running, you know, things change. Leverkusen, for example. Leverkusen looked like they could quite easily get themselves in and amongst the Champions League spots. So it's a massive, just nobody knows. It's like a, you know, a mystery door. And everyone's just walking through this door and then we'll see what happens once we get through it. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a crazy time in football, but it's quite exciting in terms of uh oh. <laughs> For me, I just want to see which teams are able to. to... Oh, Deva, I, I think you're turning into a robot. <laughs> what does Rodney say? Our player is going to. Yeah. Have... yeah, wait, wait, Deva, come yeah. back and come back in again. Come back because I think. Okay, oh, exactly. you're there. Okay, you're there. It, so, wait, so, so, here. have you guys had a. Is this a real thing? I don't know. Of so. like coronavirus masks in football? I can't see I that. So. For me, if you're playing with masks, it's not safe to play, so don't play. Like for me, you're you're, you're trying too hard at that point. Mm. That's why I said the referee wearing the mask in UFC. It just made me laugh because I'm like, none none of the fighters are wearing masks. I don't know if the yeah. people around were wearing masks. I'm not sure. But you're wearing masks. Why well, are you afraid that you've got something? If you've got something, you shouldn't be refereeing. If they've got something, they shouldn't be fighting. So you have yeah, to be, you mentioned the players being unsure. Of course, it's a human. Um, the human nature to kind of maybe have that um, unsurety. But from, if you are happy to play, you need to play with the freedom. If you're not, if you're not sure about returning, then say to your manager, I'm not comfortable. I'm not going to play. Because you would probably do more harm than good to your team playing 50% on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you get close, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. so, so because again, I think maybe I want to explain like this. Should players get paid if they don't want to play? Because my thing about it is, since so this is another aspect, I wanted to even to ask you guys. So let's say, for example, um, Sancho personally feeling he doesn't feel safe. Lewandowski personally feeling he doesn't feel safe. Um, Timo Werner personally feeling he just doesn't feel safe. Should you still then? go ahead because as a club i can't force my star player to play but my star player should be given the rights for his own decisions to say that he does not feel safe enough to then play but if i've lost my star player not out of injury or suspension but because of he has decided not to play is doesn't that put my team at an unfair disadvantage because again it's like what because again the german effort what can they do you know, you, you can't just. Mm. But it's the same. It's the same as if you had a player who was under stress, for example, and needed to have personal leave, then you couldn't just say no. You have to play. It's the <laughs> same. It's the same kind of thing. Um, in terms of should they be paid? Well, they're paid by salary, so they should be paid. 
um, they might not get the bonuses, they might not get the performance bonus and X, Y, Z, but of course they should be paid. At the end of the day, you're asking someone to do, uh, to, to go into something that no one's really sure of in terms of his safety, because you can't guarantee his safety. Um, I mean, you'd probably do a load of testing and everything like that, but that's still not a guarantee. Um, so you're asking someone to go into something. If they're not comfortable to do that, then by all means, you've got to say, well, that's fair enough. It's your life at the end of the day. You've got a family. You've got to think about all of those kind of things. So, the There's certain players. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, again, I was talking to Yannick, and she was saying there's, there's Man City players like De Bruyne, who's got a pregnant wife. Mm. He might be thinking, I don't know if I want to go out there because I have to go home to my wife who's pregnant, and that could... Whereas you've got mm. someone who may be living by themselves, they, they don't have that same risk factor. Mm -hmm. Or you might have someone who's um, taking care of their mom, whatever it is, different ages. There's a lot of a lot of different things. But what I would hope is that, of course, you may get the one-off player here, the one player there. I'd hope that by the Bundesliga coming back and, you know, the Premier League at some point and the other leagues down the line, that those discussions should be had before the, those decisions are made. So, Obviously, in the Premier League, the Premier League is run by the 20 clubs in the Premier League. So the, if, the, if those clubs made that decision, I would hope that those dis that decision is made after consulting the players. Now, I know um, different leagues are a bit different. It's run by the FAs and maybe they don't have the same consultation. But if 50% of the players are like, I'm not happy to, to play, then you can't, as a league, as a governing body, make the decision to re um, bring football back. Because who's going to want to watch um, I don't know, half of the, the youth team and Thomas Muller. Like, no, one, no one's going to be tuning into that. So I think it has to be with discussion um, with the players before any decisions are made at the top. And I hope that the Bundesliga has done that and that's why they're back. So we're not going to see Lewandowski out and Sancho, et cetera, et cetera. Is this an, an official saying? <laughs> Stay home if you're sick, come over if you're thick. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm not, no, I, I, I send oh. that out as a broadcaster through my, my contacts. <laughs> no, bro, bro, by the way, that video, devil, that you sent of Boris Johnson, I watched that thing about three or four times back. Because yeah. again, for me, like, I'm still learning like Jamaican lingo and everything because I don't really understand everything. But I think I understand this more than most things. So you may have to sort of help me with a few words. I mean, not, but that <laughs> thing was bloody hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> He rhymed it exactly with Boris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's 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 done a few. That guy, yeah. he's got quite a oh, few. Yeah, okay, done. okay. So he does like a series of like voiceovers. Yeah, he's done voiceovers quite quite a few things. He did one before with Jeremy Corbyn at a rally. I don't know if you've seen that one where he's cussing no, no. out Boris Johnson. Ah, oh, that was so funny. <laughs> I can't repeat much of what was said. But, um, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so, so basically, we've just had breaking news now. So, um, Premier League. So. The this is whole thing of the predator restart, and I think Monday afternoon there there was going to be like a talk about when um, guys can really come back and do this kind of stuff and 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 and, and, and everything and how how the, how the Premier League can re restart. So from what we are hearing, um, is the Premier League is set has been given the green light by the government to pop off in June. And we're hearing that I think it's either June 11th or June 12th might be um, a time in which the Premier League can return behind closed doors. So the government have given them a green light because we've now um, gone through the easing of this lockdown with the amazing slogan that is clear and concise called stay alert. So remember, guys, we are now scientists right now. Just stay alert and control the virus because we have now become the biologist. Boris Johnson, thank you so much. You are a, a genius. So what do you guys specifically think about the Premier League being given to Greenland? Do you think it is too much of a rush based on the money thing? Because you see, my thing here is this is that I hated the whole thing of like, football is back, Bundesliga is returning, boom. I said, no, 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 no. Germany, through trust and trace technology, mass testing, early lockdown, got themselves in a position where they've been the first major league to return. Spain and Italy were hit hard. S Syria, Italy are like, no, we're not even thinking about re returning. Right, I think only one team like Sassuolo have returned to training. And La, La Liga have only just gone through some tests with, with the players. And they're now 
your boy um, Javier Tebas, the the um, La Liga president, wants them to to re restart the league next month. But Spain and Italy were hit hard. England, right now, people say, oh, well, it's relative to population. Based on raw numbers, England have the second worst death toll in the world. So do you think that this decision to be given the green light and to go ahead to do the Premier League is in good faith? Or do you think there may be too much of a rush in trying to get the Premier League done and England are not really yet in a position to really be safe? Come to Devil first with this. Um, well, I think you have to think of the clubs. I know Brighton have just had a, another player post, posted, uh, tested positive, I should say. But um, you'd think if any, if any industry would be able to cope with something like this, uh, you'd think that the football industry would be able to because of the amount of money involved in it. They can get testing like that. Do you know what I mean? They have vast medical teams. They have access to scientists. They have access to all this kind of stuff. Um, so you'd think the reason to bring it back when they have is due to the fact that they can do it in a safe manner. Um, you know, may God, God forbid that they do bring it back and, you know, players start contacting this, this virus or whatnot, uh, and then they have to cancel it again or whatever or postpone it again. But you'd think that they've done their testing, they've done their, they've spoken to the clubs, they've spoken to the players, you'd hope, uh, and everyone is comfortable enough to say, we can go ahead by this date. And it's not a necessary stonewall date, yeah. 12th or the 11th of June, it's just, you could go ahead at this time. Um, I think before, what, one of the problems was, is that they wanted to get it done before, uh, was it July, I think, was it UEFA or someone said they have to have it Probably started by July because of the, the, the contract situation with yeah. players, our contract and that kind of stuff. Yeah, and that's another big thing because players might be going into it thinking, "Well, I, I my contract's up in you know end of June. If we're starting to play in June, say you pick up a big injury, mm. what are you going to do? You're going to have no club. No one's going to be able to sign you because you got say you're out for a year and you mm. get injured in the 28th of June and your contract runs out the first of July." You ain't got a club. <laughs> you, you ain't earning no money. So there's going to be certain players who, unless they figure out the contract thing first, I think there's going to be a lot of apprehensive players who are thinking, well, do I really want to risk playing for three, four weeks, pick up an injury and know that I have no career for the next year? Mm. There's, there's, a lot, there's a lot to it, a lot. Okay, well, actually, before Nick goes, mm. so I think people in the live chat have, have referred me to this. Um, I'm just, 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 just going to put this up, but just let you guys react to it right now. So um, this is from Danny Rose. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, okay. But, so, you know, I, do, I, I respect Danny Rose because he's one of the only footballers who just says what he thinks. And it, you know what I mean? I, I, I respect his, his views on quite a few things. And you know, fair enough. That there is that human element of it, where obviously people are are dying, people's lives are at risk. Um, so I understand what he's saying, but then there's also the other element of, you know, a lot of people. Football is a massive escape for them. It's mm. a massive escape, and it and it and it gives hope. Do you know what I mean uh, the, the sight of the Premier? What does that have to do with Danny Rose? So, I mean, Danny Rose, no, but Danny Rose has his own... Oh, I should now respond. Like, oh, no, but... No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. You're raising the morale that's of the That's not what I'm saying at all. That's so? not what I'm saying at all. That's not what I'm saying at all. He, he has every right to, to say, I don't want to come back. And that's what I said before. As hmm. a manager, if you're a player saying, I don't want to play, that's fine. You don't play. I have players who I can choose from. And that's his right as an individual. No one could force him to play. That's fine. But what I'm saying by it gives hope is when if people see football coming back, it, it gives hope that some sort of normality is on the horizon. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that you should rush it back because people want to go down the pub and have a pint or people want to watch people play ball. It's more than that. It's the hope that if we can get these things back, we might be able to see the other end of this coronavirus pandemic. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I think um, I... I... I've been kind of on the same line of what 
Danny Rose has been saying since that this rush to get, and I'm not saying Devo's even saying this, but just in general, this rush to get football back and the discussion about what should we do with the season? Should we cancel, void, declare? Da, 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 da. I'm like, we don't know. We don't know what um, is going to happen with you know with society. So we're having the discussions in a in a vacuum. We're, we're having discussion based on I don't know feeling and um, assumptions that really carry no weight because if first of June or twelfth of June, whatever the day is, if the the numbers have gone back up or they haven't dropped, then we're not going to restart. So all the talk about what we, what we should do is is really a moot point until we know where we are. And I've always said until the point when we are ready to return safely, it's at that point we should say, all right, do we cancel this season, void it, or do we um, re resume as we left off? It's only at that point should really that discussion be having. To be having that discussion, which we've been having since March, and I'm like, it's ridiculous because we're, we're, we're two, three months down the line and when we, we haven't started football. So the discussion we were having two months ago were ridiculous. It was way All too right. soon. And I, but, I, go on, go on. But I was just going to say, but don't you think that in terms of football, uh, uh, if you just look at it as its own entity, uh, it's in a much better position to deal with this than the general, general society because they can, control, they can control the people within the industry a lot better than what we can. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, the, the players, that kind of board, that kind of stuff. yes, definitely it, yeah. things like that. Um, and it, they, the players, if they have to lock themselves in their house for two weeks, it doesn't matter. They probably there's probably rooms I haven't even seen in that house. That's like a holiday for them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So in terms of keeping things under uh, under control, in you that know who's respect, tested, who is positive, who is not positive. Yes, you, yes. You, you know so, Rather than like it'll, millions of people just out yeah. there. But, but, but it'll, be the it'll be safer for them to return, even if the outside world isn't as safe. If you but, but it right. depends how they return, because if mm. they return to play and then go back home before their next game, wherever it is, then mm -hmm. they're interacting with people who are interacting with the mass public. Yeah. So then now you lose mm. that control. It's, okay, it's a bit more control because you can test them, but then when do those mm. tests come back? Are they good? Do we know before they play the next game whether they are coronavirus free or mm. not? Uh, you would have to literally have them all in like a, a camp, basically. You cannot leave this <laughs> until all the games are played. And I know that camp. Was <laughs> time ago. That's the only way that we can be, mm. I would say, 100% certain. And that includes things like um, journalists, the TV people, because they're interacting as well. They're going here, mm. they're going there. Then they're going to go to the grounds. They're going to interview players. There's so many different things that you can't control, even though there's elements that you can control more so than... Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, a, that's a good point. If they were serious about just getting the season done, they would ban journalists and all them lot from the stadium. Mm. It would literally just be the two teams and the medical staff that they need, and boom, play. Mm. And then we'll let you know the result after. <laughs> if, they were, no, if they were that serious about, we need to play football, and, yeah. but I have, they wouldn't even care about journalists and TV what and I would that. say is that I think, I, I think they definitely have to because fans I think fans would not agree to football being played that we can't see because we're like we're paying for you lot You're, we're paying your wages by everything that we've bought throughout the year I agree possibly the journalist thing and that kind of stuff but TV cameras need to be there Everything, everything else. Can't we, we can't use drones like internet things or something or like. This is, you see, do you know what? Do you know what this annoying? You see, we should look. Look, we should have robotics right now because if we had an advanced robotic society, we can send these robots to come in and actually film. No, no, never be real. Film this stuff for us, so human beings don't have to be like. But we screwed up by not having a fully functioning robotic society with androids. And look, and now we're yeah, and, then we're, and then when that goes south, then what? You're gonna hey, need look, the resistance. It, it is what it, no, like it's gonna happen. I mean, robots are, are, you, are, are you John Connors? It's gonna happen anyway, so we can't do anything. All right, so guys, um, so last ten minutes, we'll take some questions from the live chat. So send in your questions right now. Last ten minutes, send in your questions right now before we we, we going through. Um, I was reading some some something just now when I was researching. So the I think it was Neville who said that United should. Bring out 20 mil to sign your boy, the big man who's doing the green, white, and green proud. 
um, Igalo. Wait, he said that they should. Permanent. What? Did he say they should sign him? Should sign. I read Never. that different, but go on. <laughs> oh, no, 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 yeah, I think that because, well, maybe, but I, I saw a thing, I think it was on the Metro, yeah. that um, Neville said that's no, my United should go in and sign in um, and sign a gallo. So, would you want a gallo signed permanently or thank you for your services? We want to go and find a, a proper striker when just, the transfer market opens. He's actually against the 20 million transfer. He was saying, so what he said was that if what do you say? He, he goes, is a Gala worth 20 million? Probably not in this market. He may have been if he continues scoring goals, but you probably don't need now to spend that 20 million. That's what he said. Um, so he was actually against it. <sighs> 20 million. I mean, 20 million is not a lot of money, but I, but but in what way? It wasn't, especially. it wasn't before coronavirus. It wasn't. I don't know what 20 million buys you now after. Maybe it is. <laughs> Maybe 20 million is a, a, a better striker than the Gala. Has Igalo done enough to warrant a contract, a full contract? No, because of everything's been cut. But I would, if he had continued the way he was playing and continued that for the rest of the season, then I think he would be worth a 20 million transfer. Based on what he's done so far, no, he's not. But I would but love doesn't, to um, see if it does finish. I, I can't remember the name of the club that is his parent club in China. Then they say that the, the loan's going to end July, no Sorry. matter what. They well, want yeah, wherever, wherever, unless you pay the money. Because the the um the Chinese league starts in set no in July, I think it is. Yeah, so they want him back by July, unless United buy him, they want him back. So yeah, so it's a tough one, isn't it? It's a tough one because he was he was doing a decent little job. <laughs> he was doing, yeah. a, but as yeah. you mentioned earlier, um, the fact that you know people who were injured. They're coming back. Rashford's going to be back. We thought he would be out for the whole mm. season. Um, hopefully, I have to say hopefully, Pogba's going to be back. <laughs> he, we thought he would. We don't actually know how long he was going to be out for. Um, they ain't got no excuses now. I can't be talking about ankle and bone and all that kind of stuff. No, yeah, enough time. So just two players back um, who we didn't have um, at the time of the postponement. All right, that's, that's an interesting one. Best ever team to go trophyless. Um, maybe I'll break this off in club and international. For international, I've always said that um, one of the best teams that I've 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 ever seen internationally, just even international or club, was the Argentina 2016. Um, for me, that was an absolutely outstanding team. Obviously, a very young Messi, but Crespo, Tevez, Riquelme, um, flipping what's it called, Cambiaso. It was just a truly amazing team. and the football they played was outstanding. And I still believe that if Raquel May was on a pitch and wasn't pulled off by Pellegrini in the, in the Germany game, they would have beaten Germany, and who knows what would have happened against Italy. Obviously, many people talk about the 1982 team being one of the best teams ever. They didn't win, but I still say the 1906 team. And if we're now, we're now going to go to club, um, I'm see, club is now tricky now. Club is now pretty tricky. Um, best team club wise to go trophyless. You know what? What was it? Yes. The Middlesbrough team with Ravanelli and Juninho. But didn't they win the Carlin Cup or whatever it was called? Like so, 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 did, did they actually win a trophy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that was after that was Steve McLaren, wasn't it? Steve McLaren was the yeah, manager when they won. They got to UEFA Cup final, wasn't it? Final yeah. against Sevilla, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that team yeah, was Maroni Juninho and, then... and Ravanelli. Because I, told you, yeah. I remember because for me, like, I was almost as sad as Juninho when I think they got relegated towards the end. The football, first of all, I don't know how the hell they got Ravanelli and Juninho to begin with. But the football, those guys, oh, but the football those guys played and their combination, because remember, for you kids who don't know, you know that whole thing of the shirts over your head celebration? Ravanelli was the first guy to do that. So Ravanelli was the man who I believe, am mm -hmm. I wrong, who um, created and popularized mm -hmm. the shirts over the things celebration. And the diving celebration is Jürgen Klinsmann. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, yeah, so the Middlesbrough team with Juninho and Ravanelli and the Argentina 2006 World Cup team. So um, I'm going to say Leeds, that Leeds team. Um, that oh, that was the same. 
yeah, David O'Leary as a manager, uh, Ferdinand, Viduka, Kuehl, Hart, uh, Alan Smith, um, who else did they have? Oliver Decor, uh, Nigel Martin, they had Paul Robinson, they had um, a lot of good players there, played some good stuff, got to the semi-finals of the Champions League, I believe, uh, one year, and then it all just went, you know, they, <laughs> Peter Ridsdale, just oh, ruined, oh, ruined that club, ruined that club um, to where they are today. But I'm going to say Leeds because they had a very good team. Robbie Keane, very, very good team back in the day. And they were pushing for like the Premier League title uh, mm. just fell short. So I'll go for that team. But is that an international team or you just choose uh, International win? team as in to never win a trophy or just to go into a certain competition and not win it? Well, no, no, wait, see, see, yeah, just see, for me, I just did a, com a competition because you see, you, so you could um, say I won 2000, Euro 2000, which was a phenomenal team, the Euro 2000 team, but I go with the 06 Argentina team. Uh, probably, I'm going to say Brazil 98. Brazil 98, I'll probably say that. Um, just for R9, really. <laughs> that's for R9 because no, 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 but no, no, that team was better than the O2 yeah. team. People say yeah. that 98 yeah. team was better than the O2 team. It no, no, Nick's mm. it was Ronaldo was better, yes, yeah. but, but Rivaldo was better in O2. Was that wait, was Rivaldo there in 98? I can't remember now. No, well, who? Uh, he Rivaldo. might have been in the squad. I don't, I, I don't know actually. Wait, 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 wait. who, 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 Rivaldo in, in O2. Was he ninety? Was no, he ninety eight? Yeah, no, no, he was in ninety eight. He was in ninety eight. Because I remember him playing the the, the, the Scotland game. He was in ninety eight. Yeah, he was better in O two. Ronaldinho was there in O two. Um, Cleperson, Gilberto Silva, you know? Cleperson. I don't think Gilberto Silva was in ninety eight. Who was in the midfield? It was Cleperson. No, 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 Roberto Carlos Cafu Cafu yeah. was better in 02 than he was in 98. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what though, the, the 98 team was a hell of a lot better than the 94 team, and the 94 team won it. I know. So. I know. It was definitely better than <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think obviously I, it was I wasn't alive for it, but 1982 Brazil, based on the players that they had. Mm. That Brazil and the way they played football um, was even better than some of their predecessors. Um, but obviously, Paolo Rossi had other ideas um, in that World Cup. And mm -hmm. I, it's a bit of a cheat, but I'm going to say Juventus 2005 and 2006, where they got <laughs> match they got relegated, didn't it? So yeah. <laughs> they didn't win anything, but that was one hell of a team. <laughs> Oh my God! Mm -hmm. All right, guys, look, look, but that's that's that, that's it's for us now and everything else. So, remember, guys, we're going to be back here on Thursday for our Q and A. I remember in the description box below, if you want to follow Nick's or Devil on their Twitter, click on the link in the description box below. And to support us and to support what we're doing, as, as well as exclusive content, um, think about becoming a Patreon. The link is all down there in the description box below. So, any final words, guys? Be, be before um, Thursday. Any, any final thing to the people? Uh, I'm going to listen to um No Signal NS 10 v 10. Tonight is Ian Wright versus Julie Adenigu, um Skepta's yeah. sister. Um 80s music versus 90 90s music. So basically they're gonna oh, boy. 10, well 10 big hits from yeah. the era yeah. and the people vote on Twitter. So it's been a I don't know if anyone's uh, been. You know what? Which, 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 uh, discussion, but Rick Cross. That's Lewis. why you missed the show. Don't lie. That's why you missed the show last week. Was that was that last? The week? vibes, yeah. That was last week. Okay, was well, I can't remember. Yeah. But that one was that look. Lil Wayne and Rick Cross was brilliant because I think the the DJs that the guests who played the songs for each one they were on point, and I think it went to a tie break in the end. Yeah, and Lil Wayne won. So yeah. I was yeah. so I'm, I'm interested to see what Ian Wright um does today against Julie because Julie knows her stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah. Talented yeah. family, man. 80s versus Talented 90s. Family. You like 80s babies, innit? Yep. Yeah, so I'm, I'm back yeah. in, Julie. You're looking back here. Yeah. I got a back righty, man. <laughs> I got a back righty. Got you. Yeah, man. All right, guys. So, 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 guys, that, that, that's all the info. Remember, guys, again, if you want to follow Nix or Devil, hit them up on their Twitter in the description box below to join up our Patreon and support our Patreon. Click on the link below in the description box. Peace out, stay true, and we're out of here. Peace. Peace. And.